welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-31. Our previous episode featured the party returning to a now vacant Zamora shop, discovering that Welby was now a gas spore, and the rest of the group was arrested for, of all things, burglary, courtesy of the corrupt commander Rausch. We rejoined the quartet housed in a pair of cells in the holding facility at the guard building. Guards! Guards! yelled out a bruised Fargus Stoutheart as he beat on the bars of the cell. In the next cell over, both Lady Irena and Sister Elaine rubbed their throbbing temples. They aren't going to answer you, Fargus, pointed out the cleric. Angrily, he kicked the cell gate with his boot and began stomping around the dirty cell. It has been three days, three days since we've been arrested, he complained. You would think that we would have seen the magistrate by now. This is bullshit. Cape Silvertongue, resting in a pile of straw, leaned his head against the back wall and sighed loudly. Look, he began. Unless you have a plan, your yelling is only giving us all a headache. I miss the little guy too. We all do. These charges are baseless, and we all know that. As soon as we get to the magistrate, we will most certainly be released. Just relax and try and make the best of it. The ranger glared at the sitting bard and puffed out his chest, but received no reaction from the half-elf. Raising his hands, the large human apologized and yelled out an apologies to the female in the next cell over. Explaining that he was upset he couldn't save the rogue caused him to begin to tear up before he shifted the conversation to what he would be doing to the commander Rausch when he got his hands on him again. A door creaked at the end of the hallway and the four adventurers went to the cell doors. A very smug guard commander approached between the cells to gloat. How are ye accommodations, heroes? He remarked sarcastically. Can I get you all some wine? Perhaps a nice goose breast? He began to laugh, but cut it short as Fargus spit on the man. Wiping away the saliva, his face he confronted the ranger. Fargus stepped back to the door and waved the man. Come on, big man, you can keep your sword. I'll use it to clean out your arse. The commander moved forward, but two adjacent guards pulled him back. He angrily pointed into the cell and told Fargus that this time was coming. Leaning in, he whispered, You must with the wrong people from below. Your payback is coming, big man. As he backed away from the cell door, Cabe stepped up and spoke with him. Excuse me, General which caused Roush to look at him crossly. Have you been able to locate our other friend, or have you been too stupid to find a single halfling in the city? Fuming, Roush spun around and headed out of the holding facility, flanked by both guards. Fargus punched the wall with his knuckles, causing them to bleed. I swear I will make that man pay one day. An hour passed and the door creaked open once again. The group surmised it was lunch, and Sister Elaine remarked if Roush was bringing them the goose, which caused them all to chuckle. A dirty waif appeared, holding a bucket and four bowls. A guard appeared behind her to watch over the food delivery. Slowly, the filthy teenagers handed each prisoner a bowl. Her lack of motivation caused the guard to groan and pointed out he had to relieve himself and step to the end of the passage. Looking down the tunnel, the waif noticed the guard was preoccupied and leaned in close so that all four delvers could hear her. You are in grave danger, she pointed out, to which Lady Irena responded, gee, no kidding. The girl checked on the guard and continued, you are to be escorted out of the city tonight and killed. Be ready, and remember, it has to be a figure eight. Perplexed, the group started to ask her questions but stopped as the guard had returned. 
What are you criminals doing? The man rasped out before striking the young girl atop her head and grabbed her bucket. Carelessly, the guard tipped the bucket over, causing a smelly gray stew to spill into the bowls and all over the floor. He smacked the bucket into the girl's chest and laughed at the prisoners before slipping on some of the spilled fluid. The Delvers laughed at him, making the guard angry. Cabe threw up his fists, mimicking a fighter, telling the man to put him up, put him up, causing Fargus, Irena, and Elaine to laugh louder. The angry guard grabbed the girl by the scroff and dragged her out as she flashed eight fingers at them. The door slammed shut, leaving the quartet alone. Several minutes passed as they listened to make sure no one had remained behind. Once certain they were alone, they discussed the conversation. An argument ensued as to the options of believing the waif or not. Cabe and Sister Elaine felt that there was no reason for her to lie, and she seemed to be extremely cautious around the guard. Lady Irena and Fargus felt that she may just be making fun of the group's predicament. After nearly an hour of arguing, the group decided on a wait-and-see stance. None of the four were able to determine what a figure eight had to do with their current situation. The four decided that until their circumstances changed, they would be at the mercy of the guards and opted to get some rest. Several hours later, the four found themselves being kicked awake and told to get up. Still drowsy, the four assembled outside the cells, facing off with eight heavily armored guards. Commander Roush appeared and was quite jovial despite the late hour. How's about we go for a walk, heroes? He queried to the group. Sister Elaine countered with a question of the destination and was scoffed at by the assembled group. The commander leaned in close and poked her into the chest with his hand, stating, To your destiny, church lady. The guards laughed, and Roush beckoned them with a prancing motion while laughing. Aren't you going to bind our hands? asked Cabe Silvertongue, which caused the commander to smile. Oh, I don't think you're likely to escape at this point, half-breed. My men and I will be happy to cut you down if you try. Fargus trudged out, followed by the others, with guards on either side of them. Going up several flights of stairs, the adventurers were led outside in between some high walls. The sky had a million stars out, and each member reflected upon the coolness of the night. A caged wagon was at the end of the avenue, and it was apparent it was the end of the line for the party. As the group was led to their certain demise, Fargus and the others noticed movement atop the walls on both sides. Without warning, hooded figures came into view and began to pelt the troop with rotten tomatoes. The guards were distracted, trying to shield themselves from the bad food when Sister Elaine noticed a solitary figure throw a chain at her. Catching the fragile item, she looked up and saw the person make a figure eight into the air. Quick, grab the chain, she yelled. Her associates each took a hold of the metal and the cleric said, make a figure eight. The group moved about and as the lines crossed in the center of the chain, a bright light exploded in the area. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.